Everybody, the Gfinity Masters Spring 2. Uh, we're getting ready for our next match of the day. We are joined on the couch by Nimsh and Admirable. What's up, guys? Well, last match, man. Rain had really put on a show there. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Firebat a little bit afterwards. He said Rain had played that matchup excellently. I don't think he made a single mistake. Which Firebat is, said that. It's wow. very rare for a player to go through an entire match without making a mistake in general. Like, it just doesn't happen very often. And to, you know, to hear the world champion say it too, like, wow, that's something. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been watching from the audience, and I really enjoyed the whole match. Like uh, Reynolds seems super calm about stuff. Like even though he got some weird RNG at some points, like still he played it really well, and uh, he kept his uh, he kept his cool. Yeah. And uh, those like some really uh, intense and difficult matchups, actually, like freeze mage, hand lock, like things where you have really have to think about your decisions, like many cards, and like not only the face hunter things. I'm more curious because you know life uh, life coach was his opponent. I'm more curious about you know how did you think life coach play too because maybe you know we were we were generalizing it as a victim of the matchups and maybe his lineups overall. Do you think it's like that or could life coach have done anything better? Really, the only thing that uh, I think really came into account in terms of you know could he have not done anything differently was really the last game. I mean, his handlock draw was so poor in the last right. one. Didn't really have an option to do anything. But as far as as the rest of the matches go, you know, it was very life coach where he'll make decisions that you don't really you not don't understand them in the time I heard right at the moment. Said. Yeah, and like, this is why life coach yeah. he always <laughs> this makes This is why he's special. Once, a couple turns later, and yeah, you'll see what's happening. Yeah. And um so yeah, he did have a lot of opportunities to do different stuff. Whether or not those were consequential decisions would have been another story. I think the games um in terms of you know, who won and who lost were kind of straightforward uh, because Reyna was just, he was playing so on point. You know, when you watched him actually play the match, it was, it was no question that he was going to win these games. It's really hard to say. Like, um, Druid versus Warlock when uh, he went for face and then uh, Reyna actually got the Void Walker. That was unfortunate for Life Coach. Yeah, that was pretty tough to swallow, at least on Life Coach's end. But, um, you know, he still has another chance. Reyna is through. In fact, this is an opportunity for us to talk about what's happened so far because people have been watching the stream, maybe they don't know the full results. Uh, over in Group A, we started off the day with Firebat advancing through, and then Krobo was able to get revenge on Zozos and advance in second place. Over in Group D, we have Powder, who advanced in first place, and IB Dutch Boy from the Netherlands, able to take out Orange, who went out 0-2 in the tournament. Pretty uncharacteristic from the guy who who's been on the hottest streak in Hearthstone recently. Oh man, that match. Like, it, they went to game number five, and it was Mechmage versus Mechmage, really close, but then uh, it's actually LB du Dutch Boy. Uh, succeeded in, in beating beating Orange. Oh, interesting. Meanwhile, Ardu and Faramir in Group B, uh, I guess we don't know the conclusion of that series, but we do know that Airbrush defeated Movitz in the loser's bracket, which means the biggest trash talker of the group has unfortunately <laughs> been eliminated, which makes me sad, because I think people would really like to see a guy like Movitz talk, because he's got a lot to say about other players. It's really funny. I always love trash talking. I do. It's my favorite. It's, it's an underappreciated skill in Hearthstone, yeah. in my opinion. Speaking on top of, of deck preparation and execution. Speaking of trash talking, Orange was actually trash talking himself. Uh, yeah, he does that a lot, man. The Swedish <laughs> has, in general, the Scandinavian region, man, a lot of self-deprecating humor. I love it. He said that he played uh, awfully in his match, is mm -hmm. what he told me just a moment ago. Of course, this is when my first time meeting Orange, too. I'm glad that I got to meet oh, him. Oh, you've never met Orange. Yeah, I, I got to meet He's him on his O2 man. performance in this tournament. It was great. How did you enjoy it? Oh, it was awesome. That's when he finally admitted that, you know, he'd, he'd made a mistake. And I was like, we did gotcha. it. Gotcha. Hey, gr He's growing up. He is, man. Ooh, He's Orange. a young guy. You know what? Fun fact, uh, him and Airbrush have known each other for eight years, dating wow. back to middle school. They played Magic the Gathering. Uh, and Orange, of course, went a little bit more hardcore, and Airbrush was more casual. But now they're, they're here hanging out again uh, in London. And playing some Hearthstone. So a really cool reunion for those guys, I suppose. A crazy amount of years. Oh, yeah, certainly. And uh, also the guys are, um, well, right now Orange actually le uh, left Team Darkstar, but uh, they revived. Oh, okay. Oh. I was like, Orange left. I was like, what? <laughs> and then you said Darkstar. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. He's, he's still like. In. <laughs> just leaves Ark. He's like, yeah, we don't do I'm <laughs> this one. <laughs> I don't need them. I just won two premier tournaments. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Arch, that's yeah. pretty cocky of you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at the, uh, the retiring. bracket. <laughs> retiring in the blaze of glory. That's right. In the blaze of orange glory. Uh, this is how the round of eight is shaping up so far. Firebat will play the second place from Group B. So uh, whoever loses between Artie and Faramir and then wins versus uh, Airbrush, that's going to be what's happening. Raynad, of course, is going to be playing against LB Dutch Boy. And that, of course, moves it to their top four. Followed by Kroba versus the first place finisher between RDU and Faramir. And then Powder versus the winner of Life Coach versus Tang. Powder has been so consistent. 
throughout tournaments lately. I mean, he, he yeah. this is the second time he qualified. That's right. People match. might assume he's an invite, but he's not. Yeah, it, yeah. The qualified players they, they had to go seven zero in the tournaments they were playing to qualify for this. Powder has done it twice, and now he's made top eight of this event. He also recently won a, a big UK LAN, if I uh, remember correctly. So Powder is really around and uh, really consistent with performance, like yeah. both live and. Uh, why, why do you think Powder goes under the radar so much as a player? Um, you know, a lot of it has to do with kind of how you're going to publicize yourself. You know, if you're writing a lot of guides or uh, you're streaming a ton, you're going to get a little bit more attention than if you're not doing those things. You know, you look at RDU, after this guy had won DreamHack, he went He hardcore. got a lot of attention. <laughs> well, you know, for maybe another reason, but he started streaming a lot after that. <laughs> and, you know, he was, he was active on Reddit. He was constantly winning tournaments. He was making it a point to put himself out there. And even someone like Life Coach, he started doing it. He, st he streamed just because he enjoyed sharing his thoughts with a, with a community of players who wanted to learn. And he's, he does it so consistently now. I mean, thousands of people watch Life Coach's stream, and he's gotten a bunch of attention. Publicizing yourself is really important from these players' standpoint if they want to get recognized as something. And I'm not saying that Powder hasn't done that, but maybe he hasn't done it as much or he hasn't been as consistent, or maybe he just kind of is late to the party. I think you're definitely right. Like, you need to approach the community and be vocal. Powder is a, a, a player who is mostly testing with his teammates, and he's not that vocal about stuff he's, he's doing. He's just focusing on the game and trying to be good at the game. And he is, but then like he's not that recognized. And maybe maybe this tournament will actually give him another tournament win, and everybody will be like, "All right, like Powder is winning all this stuff. Like we can't talk to him, but we want to watch him play." He's uh, hit number one uh, on Legend multiple times. He's done so well qualifying for events and, and playing really strong. Uh, maybe he can continue to push it through. But it's about his teammate Faramir on Trig Esports. Uh, you know, I don't really know too much about how Farmir feels nowadays, but I know that he's worked really hard to get to where he is at the moment. And definitely one of the most friendly guys out of all the pros who really likes uh, getting chummy with people. So I, I think Farmir, uh, people always write him off because they just recognize, they're like, oh, I, re I, I saw that name somewhere in a book I read in high school, like, you know, Lord <laughs> of the Hobbits or something like that. And it's like, no, man, this guy actually has a lot of personality. And I really hope people can uh, get to know him a little bit better. He's an excellent player, too. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Farmer started a long time ago, and he had the, the, a long way to, to learn the game and get better yeah. playing uh, on, uh, offline events as well. He was top eight DreamHack uh, winter, I believe. Then in December, he won two big events. Yeah. So he came uh, a long way, and he's definitely a threat. He's also probably the only person that I think is taller than Nimsh in the existence of humanity. <laughs> he's taller than Darkwanix, isn't he? Oh, that's right, Dark Onyx, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. <laughs> I forgot here, about that too. Dark Onyx and me, as as far as like the height goes. Yeah, you guys are just so crazy, and then there's me and Admirable on the other yeah. side. Well, there's always we're keeping, we're keeping the <laughs> we're keeping the average right. right where it needs to be. You guys are like going way above and beyond, and it's like, come on, guys, let's not get ridiculous yeah. now. Six well, foot seven is enough. Save you some guys of need it for to the share with us. Yeah, for real. Please. I can't even Thank reach you. the top shelf of the grocery store. Well, you know, like while walking through the door, I often finally just we can put something under your player profile on my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, you know, okay, we, we don't have to talk too much about this, guys. <laughs> but uh, what we do know is that Faramir is a big guy and a big player too. And we're going to yeah. see if he can uh, take that up against RDU, a player that he's very familiar with, and also a multi-time tournament champion. We're just going to give it over to our cast to get ready for this match. Who's going to go to the round of eight? We'll find out starting now. All right, guys, welcome back to the Gini Finity Masters. We have RDU versus Faramir. How do you think that's going to go, Lofa? Well, you know, I might be kind of biased, right? But I will, uh, I will try to be objective as much as I can, especially when it comes to game knowledge here. So uh, it really depends on the matchups. I was talking to, um, before the match to RDU and Faramir, and RDU was kind of feeling less confident in this, uh, with his lineup against Faramir in particular, so we'll have to see how it pans out because RDU plays a really aggressive uh, aggressive lineup. Warlock, which is Zoo, Hunter, Face Hunter, Shaman, which is all in Shaman with Max, yeah. and you know, the all the aggressive stuff. And Faramir plays the more conservative uh, lineup like Paladin, Rogue, and Hunter. Well, we know how the Hunter will look, but Rogue is really great against Zoo, an example. And Paladin is an all-around deck which can win against anyone, almost anyone. And yeah, we're going straight into the game here. And looking at Faramir's hand, you know, that's not too bad. Um, maybe the Iron B Carl can go there, but looking at RDU, having the Imp Gamboss and the Flame Imp could uh, work out pretty well for him. Well, the, the Iron Big Owl is not so bad against Zoo, you know? But the oh, Zombie Chop top deck 
is just insanely good. Wow, that zombie chair is going to do some work. And the, and the shield, the minibot, and the cock. I mean, he's got a lot of good early answers to what Zoo can throw on the, on the field. This looks really good for the Paladin. I mean, really Fal good. Paladin's kind of had a shaky uh, performance here at Gfinity. He's kind of had his ups, ups and downs, but this is the kind of hand you want to see with Paladin. Definitely. Definitely, yes. And now when when you see that the zombie chair will not trade for the flame imp, you can assume there is a cock hammer on turn three. Even oh yeah, definitely. Because now he kind of he kind of said it when he did, didn't instantly trade uh, instantly traded. it. Mm. I mean, th 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 he's got to decide what information he wants to give uh, Ardu here. Like you said, he's given the information that Cog Hammer could be on the horizon. But if he had traded, then he could have used the shielded mini bot to trade into something else, and then Cog um, Cog Hammer. So he would have got the divine shield anyway. But yeah, he goes out for the trade there, Ardu, and he's going to point out uh, his Im Gang boss. Yeah, and now the Gong Hammer will have to, if, if he wants to play the Coke Hammer, then he has to also trade the uh, Divine Shield first. So he spawns one, two minions basically with that. Yeah, and these minions will uh, get rid of the Divine Shield again. They won't be able to clean up the uh, yeah. the mini bot straight away, but if we uh, see uh, we see a Dire Wolf Alpha in Ardu's hand, so that's going to be doing some work here. Oh, we and see the two. second one. Wow. He plays two, so it's like a. This is a straight to the face zoo, you know. Yeah. No void colors, no shenanigans with the demon locks and uh, 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 with like the Malganis draw into implosions and stuff. This is a straight retro zoo. And with we've seen of the sea giants. Game. Uh, well, there was a sea giant back in the day when implosion was, uh, you know, released. So it's still. Retro Zoo. Uh, yeah, because Orange uh, picked up Sea Giants in his zoo this weekend, and we had Reynard playing the yeah, Doctor I, I Boom mean, and stuff. But this is plays the oh, he's the, playing the Sea Giant uh, Zoo, but it's still a more retro zoo than uh, the uh, new kind of um, demon zoo, you would say. So Ardu's, what's he thinking about here? How he's gonna? Well, he can use the owl to silence and put um, the taunt away, right? So that's like. Having double value from the from um, from the owl, but I'm sure he only plays one owl, so he wants to keep that for an example, Belcher or Tyrion or a Sylvanas if that if something really bad happens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ardu's wasn't feeling too happy about this because the car camera just does so well cleaning up these uh, early zoo drops, and um, yeah, it's it's better than Fury Warrix. Yeah, it, most of the time the two points of damage will be enough to clear any creature that Zo drops, uh, Zo drops and uh, the durability, the one point of durability means you have one more trade available. Yeah, it gives you a lot more value because we're not seeing like harvest golems in uh, Zoo anymore. I mean, Imp Gambos yep. probably taking over that and they, the Fiery Warks can't deal with Imp Gambos anyway. So like you said, a Gog Hammer in this situation with the Divine Shield and the Taunt on the minion you have is just so much more value. It's like five for one if you think about it. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Insane. So how do you is he has to drop the hunted creeper, and I would assume he will lift up now. Okay, so he goes for the silence. Yeah, it's still okay, but the bad thing bad thing is it's still <laughs> oh wow. And now the defender of August. So does it change anything? You can trade the one one for the owl. You can also play your owl to hunt to to silence the uh, silen um, hunted creeper. And clear the board, still leaving like three creatures. Yeah, he's setting up for a core master here. He's got that in hand ready. So next turn, if uh, Ardu can't deal with these tokens, he's gonna have a massive board to deal with. And Zoo's got no momentum here, which is a big problem. Yeah. We do see a sea giant coming to the hand, but oh, and followed by a doom guard. I don't think Ardu can turn this game around. I don't think he plays Hellfire or Shadow Flame, so. There's no way he can. He'd need like a knife juggle and an implosion back to back. But even by then, it's no, too late. That it's too late. You will see a uh, two free free minions basically for free, and even a Tyrion. Uh, I don't see this game turning around. You can play, yeah, exactly. You can play the defensive Agus and him about distance. So maybe if now there will be a implosion being drawn, but then you lack the knife juggler. Yeah, and you so, can't tap for it either. Yeah. That doesn't look good for, for Adi oh. here. And second power overwhelming, it's just useless. That's a, like a blank draw. 
I mean, Adieu's body language is saying a lot about how he feels about this hand yeah. and this whole situation. It's kind of very bleak for him. Faramir seems very focused, and he, he pretty much knows that he can close out this game very easily next turn if these tokens aren't deal with. Peacekeeper draw basically also sealing the deal here. So the Direwolf Alpha just getting dropped there for a bit more pressure, but I think Faramir is in a situation now where he just doesn't care. He's just got yeah. so much going on here. It's lethal, right? 7, 10, 12, yeah. yeah. yeah it was a fast game. And basically, when when you see Paladin curving out perfectly, turn one Zombie Chow, turn two Mini Bot, turn three Cock Hammer, turn four into whatever, because whatever you drop on turn four, when you have already the weapon available to make uh, to to make the trades, you basically see the Paladin building up the whole board and just crushing you instantly. Whatever just lands on the board it is getting crushed. Yeah, it's like you said, that weapon will trade so well, take away so many minions, like four for one, like you said, and, and against a deck like Zoo, it very much does that. And Zoo just, like we saw then, just couldn't come back. He just couldn't develop his board anymore because that weapon just kept dealing with all the threats. And he, and like you said, uh, Farami could just develop his own board to a point where um, Ardu just couldn't do anything. Well, Ardu will have to use uh, something that will be great against Rogue and Hunter at the same time. So I think he, he can pick the Hunter of, of um, his choice. Because then you have a really decent matchup against the Rogue and a 50-50 coin flip against uh, the Mirror match, right? Yeah, that's good. And, in, and if he just wants to get that win on the board now, I imagine. I mean, wh what do you think about the other matchups? So, so we got the Shaman. What's the Shaman? What does he want the Shaman to play against more? Would you say the Rogue? Is it, does it do I would say the Shaman wants, uh, wants to be played against the Rogue. So yeah, so ardu has got to kind of figure out how he's going to match up these decks now in the, in the upcoming games because that could be vital to how he wins this series because like you said, Faramir's lineup's really strong right now against this lineup, so it could be very important how these games are. The these Zoo lined up. is a really weak link in the Ardu's lineup because the Zoo basically uh, loses to all two decks that, are, that Faramir has left. So Rogue and Hunter are really great against the Zoo. So Ardu actually picks his zoo again, and he picks into Face Hunter. Oh, this is a really bad matchup. But he does get the Argent Squire. It, it might get a two for one if we see any more of um, Lepanomes come down. Maybe no, more. and the Unleashed Hounds. This is the crucial card you want to get against Zoo, because that that basically declines implosion value, and it even just pushes pushes the damage further for the um, for the hunter. And in most cases, it lets you ignore the board completely because yeah. you want them to develop a board as much as possible to make a uh, big unleash swing where you just get loads of damage. Oh and the second oh, one, wow. Oh, and a Leok as well to follow up. I mean, a Huffer would have been good. He would have got the instant damage, but if this is not dealt with, uh, he and could have a big unleash board. What's also important, if single flame um, that RDU has in uh, in his lineup, because I think that's a one-off, uh, it's the most awful card against Face Hunter. You can't play it on turn one because it will be dealt with with a Leper Gnome and that deals basically five points of damage. This is a very awkward situation. If he doesn't get free, he's... Oh, oh wow. This, so is, this is game. Pretty this much. is basically game because now you have to use the Hunted Creeper to kill the... This. Now you can't kill the Creeper because then you give him additional two points of damage. You just have to go face of it, you just can't. Yeah, and now Unleash the Hounds will just basically win the whole game. It's six points of damage, just go face. You can ignore the board, I think. You, yeah, by, yeah you definitely, 100%. 10 points of damage for three points of mana, I mean six points of damage from Unleash the Hounds, and then additional four points of damage from the two creatures already on board. So, when you do that, and you have already a quick shot in your hand, you Turn five will look like Wolf Rider to the face and Hero Power. Your your opponent is at eleven points of damage only because of that. So Oh wow, wow look at that board, it's incredible. I don't know how hard is gonna come back from this without something like a half like you said, but he doesn't run, so No. Nope. Shadow Flame will be even better. Oh wow. So uh, he's got an Argus, it, it it can hold things up a little but bit, the but Argus it's not enough doesn't really achieve much. Y you have to kill the Leok with your two Spectral Tigers, uh, I mean Spectral uh, Spiders, right? Because you want to, the demons to be alive, for an example, in Melgana's drop, but oh, never mind, Ardu doesn't play that. So, it doesn't really that, matter which one he is. It, it doesn't really matter what you do. You will still lose in like 
three games. Anyway. So he starts clearing up a little bit of the board. He still has those two taunts in place, but as we see from Faramir's hand is just you can so oh, oh, nice man. juggler as well. Okay, so now we just go knife juggler, unleash the hounds. You sack well, you you will lose one hound. Yeah. Because you have no space left. So maybe you just no, you do it anyway. I, I mean, think those, you do those it two anyway. knives could clear up two of those minions straight away, and then yeah, you'd have all those minions to straight go face. When you think about it, the unleash the hounds here is basically like Hunter's Hero Power because it deals two points of damage. And that's basically what you need. It goes for the... It's interesting. I would still play the Knife Jugger instead. Did you play Knife Jugger after? Oh, that's yeah. So he lost that two points. He valued the Hound over the two, the two random knives. I didn't like that, to be honest. Oh, another implosion comes out. And now both Unleash the Hounds are gone. He can now four. <laughs> can do some, but we know already that this quick shot can make quick work of this. Um... So Wolf Rider into Abusive Sergeant. Oh, Kill Command. Never mind. So it's five to face. Yeah. Into the Wolf Rider, I imagine. Oh, uh, you know, you can. Then you have seven points of mana to use the quick shot, hero power, whatever you have draw, uh, drawn, so it's not really a big difference. No, I mean, it, it's, even if he deals with the balls, like I said, he's got three damage yeah. from the quick shot, it might cycle as well, he's going to draw into something. Even and with, with a heal from RDU, there's no way to turn this game around. Hunter's at 29, 29 HP. What can you do? Nothing. And then he just taps and ends the game. So Faramir takes it 2 0 with a very quick game. Some excellent draws from Faramir. And so well, he has to. RDU has to win with Zoo anyway. So he was trying to squeeze the win and yeah. just just get away with it. If, if he doesn't win with the Zoo, it doesn't really matter if it's 3 0 or 3 2. He still loses the game. So um, I think he just doesn't want to be tired against the, after a long series with a. Two free result, an example. So maybe he just wants to try the zoo as as much as possible. Yeah, that's true. And he's like you said, he's got to make a win with it. Um, if he could have squeezed out a win, then it would have uh, looked really good for him. He could have uh, yeah. maybe gained some advantage in the, in the actual series. So it's probably worth the risk uh, going for the going for the zoo versus Hunter. He wasn't going to lose anything really, like you said, because he needs to get that win anyway. But if now, he if he if he picks the zoo again, that's basically what he does because the other two matchups that he has against the rogue are still okay. Yeah. Hunter and Shaman. W should probably win against the rogue. So if he gets this win, well, he's got two choices here. He can either do the hunter and shaman now and go for the wins and saves it at the lock for last, and try and build off, play off the momentum of those two wins, or he could throw the raw warlock in now, win, and then think, right, it's a bit yeah. easier from here now. I can, I can relax a little if bit. If he wins with the warlock now, then Farmy will be so uncomfortable going into the next matches. Maybe that will affect him more than the other, w the other way around when it will be, you know, 2-2 two, two, and the final match when he has the better matchup. Exactly, he has the advantage at that point. So yeah, definitely going for, uh, probably going to go for the Warlock again, like Lofar said. It's, unless he goes for the other the other strategy of saving it for last. Um, yeah, we'll he's got a few f wins to build a bit of confidence. We'll have to see what Ardu decides. Yeah, It's like two different strategies I, and it only matters uh, when you think about the psycholo psychological effect. Exactly. There's no difference when it comes to uh, like in-game decisions uh, when you think about the game itself. It's only about psych psychology and, and um, what else? Time. It's, uh, well, it's about time efficiency too. Yeah, that's true, yeah. And, and the mind games uh, could play a big part in this if you can, if you, if you get it in both ways. It depends how hard you feel, how Faramir will feel in, in each situation. If he feels that if he gets Warlock last and if Faramir loses two games in a row, he might feel a bit more tilted. That's probably the best strategy. But if he feels mm -hmm. that if he wins this game now, Faramir will tilt more of that, yeah. then he'll go for that strategy. So it, it'll come down to how well Ardu knows Faramir, how he plays and how he, how he thinks about the game and the series as a whole. True. So, well, what about Faramir? He has a really good right now he has to feel super good right yeah. super confident he has only his rogue left and he knows he has really one good matchup so what do you think his approach is 
Um, he, he's, he knows that he only has to win one game, and even though he has bad matchups, they're not completely unwinnable 100%, are they? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're tough. They're, um, there's a likelihood he may lose one or bo both of them, but if he even gets a win off that, it's fine. So it doesn't matter. He just needs to just play the game now. Just play, yep. pick his rogue and just keep playing until he wins. He, he has to draw the coin, you know? That's what yeah. you want. To, that's what you want to do, to do when you have a rogue uh, available. You want the coin. You want the agent. Uh, the backstab it, maybe to go yeah. with it. Well, he already you chooses to go with the hunter. So maybe he thinks now, right? Let's get some wins on the table. Let's uh, see how yeah. Faramir feels if I take oh, the two-two. Oh, explosive trap and an abusive sergeant in one. That's not a good sign for the hunter. At all. Oh wow, that's so awful. Wow, that two is. Two traps being drawn. So this and really slows command. this really slows down RDU's deck to an extent because those scientists don't cycle those cards out for free. Yeah, it's basically like you lose two, not only two draws, but on, uh, also four points of mana. Because yeah. if you draw two mad scientists, both of those creatures are basically for free, and you also cycle your deck and you fin. Fin uh, the options that will go later into the game. And there's that coin you were talking about with the SI7. He's going to clean up that this knife juggler really fun. easily. And Faramir, um, he's looking pretty good here, I think. Pretty good. I think it's it's a great position to be in. I mean, if Ardu had some better things in his hands other than the traps, I mean, it might be a bit more even. But those traps are just just like just clogs the hand up now. And yeah. they, like you said, it makes him so more, much more mana inefficient. And Hunter is all about mana efficiency. Exactly. You want to squeeze that hero power every single turn. So an example, turn three will be the best to drop just a one mana creature and hero power. Turn four, Glaive Zuka or Hunted Creeper or Mad Scientist, hero power. Turn five, Wolf Rider, Archon Golem, hero power, and so on and so on. You always want to use the hero power. We actually see a kill command come from Ardu onto the uh, SI7. Which, which says, okay, I don't have a weapon in my hand, I don't have a creature in my hand. My I hand don't have sucks. anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my hand sucks. You can do whatever you want. If turn three, a uh, face hunter is kill commanded one of your minions, and an abusive sergeant was the first thing they played, you must be feeling pretty comfortable right now. Yeah. What are you wants to draw next turn is eagle horn bolt. If he draws the eagle horn bolt, this might turn the game around because then you have six points of damage from the basic weapon. You have also two explosive traps, which means you have four additional points of damage, and Faramir will be forced not to use the weapon, not to attack phase for some time, because then he boosts the attack uh, reach of the weapon like twice. Yeah, he doesn't want to give him any more charges on that weapon, especially if his resources are, are quite uh, poor right now. So giving him more, if he did draw the weapon, like you said, um, giving him those extra two damage from the explosive trap, that extra three damage from the bow would just not be good for him, but we don't see a weapon. Yeah, now the explosive trap being, that, that's the mana efficiency. Turn uh, a one mana drop, hero power, and explosive trap. So it's, that's really quite good for RDU right now, but the fan of Max will destroy his board and you know that you won't squeeze the damage from that. So you lose a lot of points, uh, a lot of damage from, from that fan of Knives. Basically it was like a 4 HP heal. Yeah, and we don't actually see any heals in Faramir's hand, but he's just got some really incredible cards coming up. Dr. Boom, he's got a sprint if he needs it, a low fab, a sap he's just got. It's still maybe winnable for the hunter, you know. Rogue is really oh wow. Okay, now that's that's quite a huge amount of damage. You have four from the Arcan Golem. You can also use the hero power with the explosive trap. But I don't think you want to skip the Arcan Golem right now. You would play the Arcan Golem? I'm thinking about it. Because then you basically give the Arcan Golem to uh, the Edwin will trade with the Arcan Golem most likely, unless there's a backstab. But he didn't see the backstab before, right? Right. And um, Eviscerate, he didn't see any, any of that. So, yeah, no, in hindsight, I think Ardu made a, made a good, good call with not playing the Arcan Golem now when I think about it. So, yeah. He doesn't want the Van Cleef to get a two-for-one because he, yeah. he he took out the Haunted Creeper, he'd take out the Arcane Golem. So that's a lot of value from just a 4-4 Van Cleef. So now, next turn, it's eight points of damage. And a oh, kill, and a kill command. command. Wow. So if he, if he draws, no, he doesn't even need to draw anything. If, if Parami doesn't draw a heal, he wins the game next turn. So a really clunky hand from Ardu actually turned around yeah. with some good draws to be No weapons. No... Um, Leper gnomes, 
basically all crappy minions that he could have drawn were, were in his hand and he still will win. That's incredible. That that just shows how the matchup is skewed towards the hunter, right? And he even killed commander the minion on turn three. I mean, yeah. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah. Man, I think Adio will be feeling really good about this. You can tell yeah. he seems really relieved to get a, a victory on the board. And right a now. wolf rider. He can he can use the wolf rider. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 Adio. Look what I top decked. <laughs> and Faramir is uh, he's making some sides though. He is really uh, not not um, fond of how this matchup turned out because he know he knew that Adio's hand was clunky. And he knew he could have won this game easily if he would have drawn, in example, um, more spells, some creatures that will uh, give him healing. Yeah. And that's basically it, what he needed, but he didn't get it at all. But RDU felt like really good about that game, I can tell. And like you said, with um, Faramir Asai in there, thinking, oh man, like he has such a bad hand, how did I yeah. lose that? So this may be what RDU needs to take this series now, a bit of a tilt coming from here. If he can get a really convincing win with his next deck, so it could be downhill from here for Faramir. He needs to pick the Shaman right now to push the pressure towards Faramir and then pull off a really great draw with the, with the Warlock, with the Zoo, with like a finish of double Porwell, main Doomguard or something like this. Well, you need one more creature on board, but you have a really huge burst potential in the war, uh, in the Warlock deck too. So. We'll have to see, but I, I bet my money on Shaman right now. Yeah, and even though um, Rogue has a good time versus Zoo with their backstabs and SIs, it can still draw quite clunky. I mean, if a, if a Rogue draws really clunky, especially with stuff like Dr. Boom being in there, um, mm -hmm. Zoo could steamroll out of control. I mean, we saw yesterday that Firebat didn't draw a, knight, uh, a Blade Flurry in an entire yeah. game, so yeah, it is very happens. possible. Also, if the Rogue will not have the coin, will lack the preps, for the agents. The agents are really clunky too. You have to play it on turn four if you have the deadly poison. So you basically delay everything by one turn and Zoo gains one turn because he basically Zoo wants the coin uh, coin two to yeah. put more more minions on board early game. Yeah definitely anyway we're gonna go for a quick break before the next game. We'll be right back here in London in about five minutes. All right, welcome back to the Gfinity Masters. We are currently 2-1, Faramir versus RDU. RDU just take, taking the game with his face hunter. So we're going to be going into the next game pretty soon. So how do you feel about this set now, Lofa? Well, now it can go either way, I think. It's still, the Warlock, the Zoo, has a really bad matchup against the Rogue, uh, which Faramir has, has to win with just one game. He he has to pull off one win with the rogue, which if he get uh, which is really easy if you get the coin and the agent against the zoo. It feels like so powerful against a minion heavy deck that bases on, uh, is based on early game. So do you think uh, are you to be queuing up the zoo next, or do you think we're gonna see the shaman? Well, he um, that was, that was, that was what we were talking before the break. So if. If um, he would like to stick to the zoo, it was the other. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, for now, I think he will just go with the shaman. And yeah, he he picks the shaman, which is great in That's theory against Row because there are no taunts at all, and if he just goes face with everything, he can squeeze squeeze the wind with lava burst crackles, you know. So it's face shaman. Yeah, face shaman. That's basically what it is. And he's got a pretty decent start here. He's got that um, that Cogmaster, which will start doing free damage, but he also has a Mech Warper, which will help uh, ramp some of his minions down. The most important fact is that he has the coin. This is crucial. Oh, yes, like I said, so Ro can't use any of its combo cards without using a spell first, and the coin uh, really helps Rogue get uh, things started with, like, SI7 yep. agents and stuff, and Eviscerate, for example. Exactly. So, it makes things a bit clunky for the rogue if they don't get it. The Farseer is a really lucky pickup here because it it basically... <laughs> oh, until well. he got the power mace. Yeah, <laughs> I want to say it, there's no answer to the Farseer until we saw the top deck. That was really important and not even the single uh, the, the fact that he's trading now for the mech Wolfer, but the fact is that next next uh, mech will have a boost. From that, uh, from that pole maze, but the, uh, the problem is you can you can't play around sap. That's true. I mean, we see the sap in Faramir's hand. He's actually hovering over it now, so he knows that the next mech that gets buffed is probably going to get sapped. Yeah, so he, he can save 
the power maze for a while. Because if he plays Fell River right now, then he won't attack phase. So he will he will bait the sap from his hand. Onto and the then, Fell River. Yeah. And then next turn play the another mech or maybe even the Fell River and then attack with the power maze an example. So yeah, he's, like you said, he's baited out the sap here to protect his power maze buff. And um, we didn't see a Van Cleef come down for 4 4, so it can challenge a few minions from, from the mech shaman. And those, those were actually good, good burns for RTU. There were no spells there, like uh, unless you count the Rock Biter as a burn spell, but there were no Crackles there, and you want to get those uh, as soon as possible. So none of them I mean, are high variable burn spells. Like. Yeah. Okay. Mechanical that is being played, that's also good. Maybe it's not great. Um, to play it against a Miracle Rope with Dazzle and Auctioneers, but you know that Farmer doesn't play that. So he just slams down. Uh, yeah, you have to up. slam it. And now RDU will just play the Lava Buzz on the Emperor, I think. And the value of the Emperor was not even that high, you know? Although he did pick up Dr. Boom for next turn. I'm pretty sure he's going to want to play that next turn. Yeah, really smart play here with uh, avoiding using the Lava Buzz because you want you don't want to get overloaded for the, for the next as you said, uh, and play the, uh, play the Dr. Boom. A oh. Doom Hammer! Wow, oh, that's unlucky. That's 16 points of damage against Rogue. And the Fire Elemental's gone as well. Well, the Fire Elemental is not so important, but the Doom Hammer was really crucial. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the Fire Elemental's pretty good for cleaning up some of the, the smaller minions of the Rogue. But yeah, like you said, that Fire Elemental's... Uh, no, but um, Doom Hammer is like instant. Let's say damage, isn't it? Just To be oh. honest, I didn't like the Fell Reaver because you just saw the Emperor, right? So Faramir can drop the whole 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 hand and he, he even got the spare part from the Yeti. So you basically give him another card to play. That's like game losing game losing minion here. How many oh, I wish I we knew how many cards he had left. It's like five I would assume. I think he will be basically at at the, at the bottom of the deck after those two cards were, were, are being played. Oh, here we go. So, Arju potentially has to use his, what he has in his hand to win this game now. Yeah, that's it. He has no cards left. Turn seven, and Arju has no deck left. What? <laughs> that Fell Reaver was awful, man. Awful. <laughs> so he, he, everything he has in his hand is the damage he needs to deal to the rogue. Does he actually have enough damage? Between he, he can't even, you know, raise here. He has to use the well. He has to raise, but he will get fatigue damage each turn. So he has to play a neutron, go face with everything. I think you have oh, to wow. a neutron spider tank. <sighs> this is so weird. And just go face, I guess. You have seven nine points of damage right now. 13, 14 with the lava burst. So. I don't know. I, I I wouldn't kill the Thanos for sure because you want to uh, give your you want to squeeze that additional point of damage, and your opponent has to sacrifice it to get the additional draw. Yeah, that's true. And those boom balls on their own, even when they do get uh, taken out, they can do damage all over the place. So he could rely on that one damage now, and then the extra damage from the RNG, which you'd have, which will be certainly put in a situation of using yeah. anyway. So he just goes for a totem here. Finds a spell power. Six damage. Will he use it on the Violet Teacher? Wow. Did you just go for face now, surely? Just, otherwise, you just don't win. You can time remind oh, the Dr. Boom next turn to spawn additional Boom Bots, you know? It's also an idea how to play this this game. But I assume playing all phase is way better. A sprint would be pretty decent right now, so you get the backstab. Stab. Does it change anything? It's three points of damage, so... Um, you can't clear the Dr. Boom. Easily, I mean. I mean, he does have an option to cycle with the Falnos now. Oh, and he seems yeah, to he want has to do to that do first. And... A second backstab. backstab. Wow. Now he can clear the Dr. Boom. And spawn some tokens. Yeah. So he does throw all his minions I'm into this, but Adieu's decking out, I mean, the Farmia still has options coming if he throws a sprint with a prep or something. Well, how many points of damage is that? For Lava Burst, it's six uh, now. So if you 
if you go face with the... Wait, this can be lethal. 3, 8. Are the units needs to throw 3 with the bomb to have lethal here? I guess he's gonna go for it. Oh, this is tense. And oh, look at how you face. <laughs> and it is free. Even more. <laughs> wow. Shots fired as well. <laughs> that was an amazing game. Wow. I still feel like the Fell River was one of the worst <laughs> decisions he could have made on turn five, right? Or it was turn six. I Especially think. with all those cards in his hand as yeah, well. Yeah, so it didn't make any sense. Like. Especially with the Yeti, when you gave the uh, as another card to your opponent and you saw the Emperor being played, so, so he could have dropped this everything in his hand. It was so hilarious. So Adi was feeling really good about that. <laughs> he, was, he, he clutched out of a really, really tough game and the Faramir just yeah, does Faramir not look impressed. Biting his nails, he goes, no, that didn't happen. Well, so <laughs> this could be play a major advantage to RDU now, having... Faramir probably feeling a bit shaky after that last game. He, he had everything he needed to win, but a bit of RNG went in RDU's well, favor. Double backstab, back to back. <laughs> That's Sprint anything, anything would have done, uh, but double backstab just wasn't it. He a Farseer. A Farseer, a heal bot if he has yeah. one. I don't think he plays heal bots, but Farseer would be great. And uh, Eviscerate would make sense because you kill the, um, the spider tank and Basically, you heal yourself as much as fast you would heal. Yeah. So we got the rogue. And he, he has the coin and a backstab. He must be feeling good about that. Yeah, he has to be feeling good. I mean, that is not too bad. He's got a squad. He's got a, he's got a one drop. He's got an imp gang boss. Which the could, imp gang boss is really important. It could prove a bit of trouble for Faramir if it starts spawn. Double to backstab, double bed <laughs> of knives. <laughs> what? I think Faramir is sick of seeing so many backstabs. But they will, uh, they and will do some work. And a foul That's important. You need a prep for that. But the egg is a really great draw here. So uh, the egg does protect his board from some AoE. Yeah. Maybe effect damage because it will pop into a 4-4, which the rogue, if he can if he can help it, we'll just leave that egg alone until army of, um, RDU forces it to be popped with, say, a powerful whelming or something. Yeah, yeah Ingram Gog is being played like turn 3 instantly. No. No, re no big surprises here. I was thinking for a second about the uh, Die Wolf, just to you know, squeeze the damage in, but I think it doesn't make any sense. We need to see a prep from Faramir, I think, because it'll definitely open. A Deadly open. Poison. Or a Deadly Poison, yeah. yeah. A Deadly Poison or a prep will open some options up for him. Well, right oh, sorry, go on. I just say right now, it's just oh, looking man, just a bit clunky not. for me. He has, a lot, he has the removal in hand, but he just needs some st some extra things to go with it. What about Falnos? You backstab the egg. Then you can play coin, backstep, um, backstep the imp gang boss, and blade Fury Then you deal two points. Hmm. Maybe that's an option because you have to clear the board as soon as possible right now. So damaging the egg is telegraphing board clears next turn, and the board is capable of killing a spider. Yeah, that's true. And like you said, he's got the Falmos, the Abyss, um, the Fan and the Backstab now, so he yeah. can clear. I think he needs to... What about the Hunt Creeper right now? Yeah, it just gives him a bit of board security, even if he does clear everything. I mm -hmm. mean, it might get him to blow another another Backstab on that. Oh, that was crap. the threat. And there's so, we were talking about. Falnos. Or Dra no, Drake makes no sense. So Falnos, Fan of Knives. You kill the hunted creeper, and then you play prep, fan of knives, fan of knives, and you kill you kill the whole board because you also backstab the spider. Oh wait, he's going for the Drake play. What? Um, does it make any sense? Okay, so he's going for the. Well, he will clear the whole board anyway, but I would like to see the bonus right away. Done. Okay, so Fan and I is going to come down here, clear up most of the board. He's still going to get yeah. once. And once I was feeling the Thanos was better. 
It would have cleared the whole board, right? Yeah, he needed to, to get rid of that Haunted Creeper. Give him, give him one one to this uh, quite dangerous for Zoo because of stuff like Power of Whelm and Die Wolf Alpha. Just, yeah. This is what Zoo is so good at making really good trades with cards that buff these little creatures. I mean, look at this. He traded two mana for five there. Why do you that's, I think that was a misplay by, by Faramir. We're right, right? He, he could have cleared the whole board with the Thalnos, because he gained three points of mana. Could, yeah, yeah, because he, he, he found he Thalnos, backstab, uh, fan, backstab, fan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he cleared yeah. everything. So he does still get a board clear here. But I don't know if it'll matter too much because I think can just recharge his board straight off the bat. Yeah. And the ball rolling is still in the hand, which is super important. Because this is sometimes Zoo's burst just comes from overwhelming the hand. What about yeah. sacrificing the Thanos? Maybe it would have changed something. Do you think Faramir is feeling the pressure now? I'm not sure how what's happening. So you go face with everything, right? Oh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I would have just played everything face, ignored the board. You will deal six, eight points of damage. Yeah, you'd have to go face here. So you have deal two points of damage more. Would it change anything? Now, now, uh, wait. Two points of mana yes, for the dagger, deadly poison, and oil. And you have no mana for the blade flurry, so this kind of sucks. Going you back to your previous flurry. point, though, if he did an extra two points of damage to the voider, uh, the void walker, when the mm. egg popped, he would have had four, and he could have overwhelmed that if it stayed alive and hit him for eight. So he would have been, yeah, beaten if he decided to go for that. What what he needs right now is an abusive sergeant. Yes. An example. I mean, that's the beauty of what uh, of Zulak. You can tap into these buffs. Yeah. But that was. Uh, Perhaps a more reliable way to end this game, but Faramir seems a bit puzzled with what to do here. Well, you have to dagger it. You have to use the blade for this turn, I think. But you have no way of dealing with the spider that pops up. And then you tinkers? Wait. You kill. You play the agent, right? You kill the void walker. You. That, that's, there's no point of doing that. There's the spider always around. You're so I, 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 <laughs> oh, we're putting I, the pressure I, I, on him with this rope with a bit of spam. Yeah, this guy's so you trade the Emperor for the Doom Guard, and he will not use uh, the Blade Flurry this time. That's it. So that's... Abuse of Surgeon is lethal. Nope. So you tap. So you tap, and I think if RDU feels threatened, by uh, by the hand of Harmir, he might go even go for a trade mode, but I don't see this happening. It looks like he's just gonna play the giant and trade. Yeah, I think he's trading, so he plays around a super burst from the roll. Yeah, but it makes his board a little bit more. Uh, well, the blade flurry, it's quite eight health. It's quite hard for a rope to deal with eight health Well, you can't, you can't remove the giant. Yeah, that's true. You have true. to sprint for sap, and you still die. Well, you, don't, you, don't, you won't die to um, the spider itself. You will be at one point of life if you do that. So you have to sprint, draw sap, attack the dire wolf, and you're at five points of life, and the spider tank deals well, we get to prep. for second blade, blade flurry, flurry, deadly poison. Oh, oh I guess wow! A and a prep as well. So, he... does it change anything? I mean, he could deadly poison. I mean, he could prep snap, deadly poison, blade flurry, and clear the whole board. Yeah, that's true. That's actually true. Yes. Yeah, because so, I, I forgot that the one blade flurry is for one point of mana. Yeah, press he goes for the prep snap. I mean, he's fighting for survival here. I feel like he needs to do this to make sure that... Because he just forces RDU to re recharge his board with tap him. And he can't replay the sea giant. This is for 10 points of mana and you lack a creature. Implosion, oh. that's the worst draw ever. 
and a creeper. Creature, don't do it, Rado. <laughs> no, no, why would you do that? <laughs> no, that's so awful. For two? Oh, he gets four. Please no way. There. Why would you do that? Oh, wow. And the audience are loving this. So you can't play teacher here because you don't want to generate tokens to make the sea giant come out, right? Yeah. So you take playing teacher is not a good idea. So you kind of need to play Drake, yeah, Drake weapon and Drake just flurry. weapon flurry. That's that's enough. It deals three points of damage to the face. You have a four four creature. It's way better. You just can't play these teachers right now because he knows that giant's in his hand. The implosion of the hunted creeper was just blew my mind. I think what he was thinking, because he'd well, seen he's the blade flurry the previous turn, you think, oh, he can't have another blade flurry. Two, um, he saw two fa uh, fan of knives too, but still, it makes no sense, in my opinion. I mean, this does set him up for a giant next turn. But, but he would have played the giant anyway with the blow, because oh, the true. rope would have played something. Oh, he draws a fast yeah, as well. So next turn he has an opportunity to heal as well. Oh, I So now he has to play the giant. Just drops the giant, he can't tap. Yeah, drop the giant. And uh, you can play Farseer. Farseer. Dagger, Tinkers, and you have 6, 7, 8, 11 points of damage, so if you hit the 50-50. So it still comes down to a bit of RNG and Faramir's favor here to make things easier for him. What a... well, you have no easy way of clearing the giant. You have no way of clearing the giant. You have no way. I mean, even Lofeb doesn't do anything here, really, because the power of one will just be able to be played anyway, so I guess he needs to... And you can't put the Warlock on two points of life to avoid the life tap, because that's, that's what you want to do if he is in the top deck mode, and you have, you're like one turn away from winning. So this is a really tough turn, because the, the Defender of Argus is basically like, doing one point of damage instantly, right? He still has... Two uh, abusive surgeons in his deck, which are lethal. And then a Val Valman. What? One Overwhelm and one Doomguard, is that? Yeah, one Paul, one Doomguard, and I think one Dire Wolf. He played one or two. I, don't, I can't oh, quite remember. Oh, he didn't get it! So. And now? This comes down to the top deck. There's an Argent Squire, which is awful. So you have to tap. You have to tap. There's no way you can tap. Well, oh. RDU, make the decision. Balls of steel. Oh, it's gonna come down to this tap as well. Juggler! No way! Oh, is his knife gonna go? It just needs a hit face. Oh, oh, oh man! No way, that just happened! Faramir is crushed! This oh, game was wow. unbelievable. <laughs> Misplayed by both players, I think, but <laughs> this is so funny. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to hear the analysts, what they have to say about this this game in particular. This was, first of all, the Falnos on turn four. Yep. I think that was really needed. He he played the, the Drake just to be cleared by, by the minions that were left on the board. and. Now, at the U, <laughs> the implosion your hunted creeper, in my opinion, didn't make any sense. But he went for that and he won the game. <laughs> it all came down to a knife off the knife juggler. He had two shots at it, though, and. Three shots. Oh, yeah, two three shots. shots. Yeah, of course. Oh. No, wait. No, two, no, yeah, two, 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 two shots. Two shots, yeah, two two shots. shots. Two shots with 43% each. Wow. That was probably one of that's probably my favorite series of this tournament so far. <laughs> it was intense. I mean Faramir was we were on paper, we were saying Faramir's got this, and then yeah. all of a sudden RDU just 
comes back like so aggressive as well. It's it's excellent game. Like a hot knife through butter. Oh wow! So this is but this is the mark of a champion. <laughs> uh, RDU has won many tournaments and these. Yeah. You know what's funny? That the most entertaining matches are the ones where players are misplaying and RNG is a huge part of yeah. it. So <laughs> it's just a lot of clutch yeah. moments where you just like. We just lacked a Ragnaros one to seven hit or whatever, so yeah. something like that. And uh, so, we'll be uh, we're going now to the analyst desk. Thank you for watching. This was a really exciting match, and we'll see what the analysts have to say to, about that. Man, I love that series. That was that was so funny, man. Everything about that last fifteen seconds of what everything was cutting up until Lothar and Agua was just. That made the tournament for me. Nerve wrecking, man. nerve wrecking. That the was awesome. Reactions of players were golden. Like already you just showing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, at farm you were like crushed because it was so nerve wracking, like the last moments, and then the right. juggle to the face. I hope they had the DSLRs on the players because that's like mon <laughs> esports montage type of reaction, right? Where the guy like takes off the headset. Yeah, really <laughs> that good. That was awesome, bro. <laughs> that was great. Well, RDU, you not only did he win, it was how he won. The fact that he got to juggle on top of being down 0 2 and had to defeat Rogue three times with a matchup. Zoo versus Rogue can be really tough. So, like, you know, a very good job there by RDU to be able to pull it back. Admirable. Uh, let's talk a little bit about something. What are some of the moments that stuck out to you in that series? Well, really, the, the biggest one for me in the whole series was. RDU misplaying the last Mech Shaman turn. Oh. Where it's the, the second to last <clears throat> Mech Shaman turn. No, no, it was the very, it was the very oh, last oh, turn. The, oh, okay. I don't know. Feather Reaver on board, Mechanical yeah. Yeti. No, no, no. no, 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 that, no, no I mean, that no, no. is a big mistake, I think. But um, that, I think this is like, this one is just 100% a mistake. There's no debate to this one. He should have time rewinded his spell power totem and then rolled to try to get another spell power totem. Then he could have replayed his spell power totem. That would have made Lava Burst 7 damage instead of 6, and that would have increased the number of times that the, the Boom Bot is lethal to face. Oh yeah, that you are actually right. And there was this, the, this turn that I mentioned with Mechanical Yeti. You always had some doubts about that. That's like, the play that stuck out to you? <laughs> okay. I, well, I mean, I mean like, it's the one that sticks out to me is like, this is an actual, like, literal mistake. Right. I guess he, trading you can always make an argument He has for 90 him. seconds to think through the turn, and right. he played it so okay. quickly that, like, just, like, hey, I, slow down a little bit. Like, is this more because it's really hard to find a mistake throughout the rest of the series? That's the one thing that you figured out? Or was there generally, like, because you were talking about how maybe some of the trades he was taking, he should have gone more to face... That would have put more pressure on Faramir, but of course, then it would have allowed Faramir more options. Yes, I mean that's always that's always going to be stylistic and dependent on what you think is going to be happening here. But the turn where he had a six-seven mechanical Yeti, and he had just played a Fell Reaver, yeah, and he's facing down an Emperor Thorison, and the way that his hand context is, like he's gone all in at this point, like he's relying on getting face damage. There is like so few circumstances where I can see six damage to your opponent's face being worth less than killing the Emperor. Especially since the Emperor would probably most likely have to do something to that board right. and, like, impact it. So that way, you know, SI7 or, like, Bladesaw would have been a higher impact, uh, which ended up being this really nail-biting point because Faramir had an opportunity to completely wipe out the remainder of RDU's deck. Now, some people always say the thing about Fell Reaver is that it causes people to misplay because they get too excited about uh, its effect. Now, we talked, we focused a lot about RDU's play there. Was Farmir right in trying to go for, like, as far as he did? Because he used up his entire hand, and as a result, did not have enough damage to push through for the final moments. I still think it's justified. I mean, if you burn through someone's entire deck, like, say that hand happens and RDU doesn't have Dr. Boom and, right. and, and Lava, Lava Burst in hand. You're in really good shape after that. It just happened to be that RDU had two of, like, the most powerful cards right. left in his hand. And yeah, this is w one of the last turns that, like, coming up to this spot, it was basically all of this had gotten cleared out, and you're looking at Time Rewinder on the Spell Power Totem to try to get a second Spell Power Totem. It's, it's a very small mistake in the grand scheme of things, but it's one he could right. have 100% of the time thought through and found, and that's what's really sticking out to me is because the pace of, this, of the play in this game has been so fast. Like, I, how many times was the, was the rope used in this entire series? This is you can one of the count best. on one hand, probably. It's one of the best. It's I mean, it's one of the quickest best of fives I've ever seen. Oh yeah, that, this only proves that uh, those guys know how to play aggro. Like from the very beginning, um, Farmir was really aggressive with the paladin, was able to take the warlock. Then he was uh, super aggressive with, with the hunter, and then we've seen the, the reversed aggression. So we've seen a lot of Zuda, um, 
Zoo Games, uh, played by RDU. How, what do you guys think about Argent Squire? That was a really interesting choice. The Squire ended up doing the same exact roll as the Flame Imp. It did like three damage and probably would have gotten taken out easily, but it's stickier. Um, and of course, you saw that Direwolf Alpha and other, other cards can definitely boom it out. So if RDU uh, did end up losing this game in that series, there's a lot of small things that you're like, well, maybe the maybe it's not necessarily the play choice, but he also builds his deck out a little bit differently than other people do. Yeah. And you wonder about the overall impact it has. I actually really like the Argent Squires of the Zoo deck. I think one of the biggest problems you're going to have with that deck is say that slot was Lepernome instead. Uh, you're not seeing that minion stick to the board. And right. with Zoo... You're going to have to go between dealing face damage and trading minions very, very often. It's always going to depend on the context of the board. So Argent Squire is still getting through the, kind of the damage that you need. A lot of times when you have the more aggressive starts with Zoo, you usually have overkill on your opponent. Um, but when you're having to trade a lot, you usually have right. just enough. So in that position, a card like Argent Squire is going to give you a little bit more leverage when it comes to trading in board positions or just keeping a resilient board versus stuff like Vanna Knives and Blade Flurry. And so I would tend to favor Argent Squire in a situation like that, especially when you couple that with Sea Giants. Not to mention that there is also Argent, a uh, different Vargas, which works great with uh, Argent Squire. Yep. All right, we have another replay coming up here at the end of the fifth game just to show you <clears throat> the, the tense moments where Ardu had to implosion his own haunted creeper and we were like <laughs> wow wow how could you do that but then of course it's one of those things where just like you were mentioning dim she just went through fan of knives and blade flurry what's the likelihood of him having it like that card again yeah this situation in total is, is really interesting because uh Ardu by this point has seen double fan of knives one blade flurry mm -hmm. so he gambled that there is no blade flurry and um on the other hand, Faramir couldn't play the, the Violet Teachers because he knew that there is a Sea Giant in the hand. Right, you don't so, want to build up too many tokens either. Yeah, the, exactly. So it was a, it was a very delicate um, end of the series. Um, Nailbiter for both players. That's why Faramir was so crushed when he lost. And I'm, I'm sure like, if Faramir would right. win, uh, would, uh, if the jungle would actually miss, Ardy would be so uh, as crushed as Faramir the Last yeah. moment. Well, the missed juggle wouldn't have necessarily ended the game either. I mean, two thirty-three percent chances. Right, and is, he, that's a that's like a point five five percent repeating, of course, percent chance to succeed. And even if he didn't, though, the Argent Squire uh, would tank a lot of damage from the minions. It wouldn't mean that Rogue was guaranteed to kill, and therefore maybe RDU could have still picked up Doomguard or yeah. you know some other thing to guarantee. Maybe a minion would have stuck and and Rogue couldn't kill everything without taking too much damage. All these different factors definitely played into it. Of course, everyone's going to focus on that knife juggler portion to win. <laughs> there are a lot of steps to get here, but absolutely, uh, I, I really like a lot of the plays here from Farmer. Some of the subtle stuff that he was doing, trying to prepare some fan of knives, hitting the eggs and that kind of stuff. Not really intuitive, but well done. Yeah, hard stuff to think through. But again, I can't stress enough, two 33% chances to succeed is is a favorite to succeed. Like, RDU is expected right. to chances, win that yeah. game more often than he loses when we he just, gets to that position. We just need an animation of a knife juggler throwing a knife with RDU's face <laughs> on it, like, <laughs> flying into Faramir. Yeah. Finish the game. Uh, this was really fun, too. Uh, and, of course, it was one of those things where it's like he could have barely survived, maybe, or try to go for it. Uh, he almost had the opportunity to even put his opponent out of tapping range, too, which was crazy. If it, the, the oil landed and he was one more point of damage, he would have put him at a uh, uh, stopping point, right, two health? I think he, had, he would have three. Like, um, I already was at 14, and he was able... Like, here he is able to deal uh, uh, 11. Yeah. Right. So if he could have put him down to... Missing like one, one less tab, yeah. no knife juggler. Now the question is, did he Just, miss a point of damage in this game? Is there a point where he could have attacked with a dagger that maybe he didn't? That's stuff a like very that. Valid question. Like, that, uh, like all that stuff comes. Oh, you're to, right. This is. Did this, he miss a damage somewhere? That's a good. I mean, I don't know if he did, but it's a good. I mean, this is kind of situation that illustrates why it's so important to be making sure that you're mid maxing at every stage of the game because in cards. You know, you can't just outplay your opponent with mechanics. It doesn't work that way. You have to be making sure that you're doing everything at every step of the way. That's so a really good missing point, that point of da missing a, a single point of damage early on could literally have been the difference in winning and losing this game. You know, maybe we should actually watch the game again and like pay closer attention. <laughs> yeah, yes, actually, right now. Yeah, we're going to bring up the replay for you guys right now. Yeah. We're going to replay the whole best of five. and uh, Screw the rest of the group, man. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and analyze this over and over. I Fun stuff, that. dude. Yeah. That was yeah, an amazing series, sure. actually. <laughs> and of course, the RDU, he won the series. This is the winning moment when he was able to tap into the knife juggler as uh, we like to just uh, take an opportunity to appreciate a little bit of personality being shown. Oh wow. man! Look, look at look, look at, at look at Faramir's face when this happens. Oh! Wow! That dagger well, hit right to the face. And then he sees the Fen of Argos and he knows he is crushed. Oh man! Bible thump. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not eliminated yet. 
No, but it was, how can you be that close? You were up 2-0, and you were in the winner's match and guaranteed top eight if from that point on, but now you're <laughs> falling over, and you're not sure if you have the guarantee of advancing it to beat Airbrushed. And that's actually tough. Airbrush is a, is a guy who is practicing with Orange a lot. He's practicing with Freaky sure. and the Team Darkstar. All right. Well, uh, guys, that was a really fun analysis segment, but we're pretty much uh, out of time here. we got to move on to potentially the last match here. I think it is actually the last match of the day. And uh, so we're going to take a few minutes. When we come back, we're going to see the conclusions of groups 